This conference will now be recorded. Last I didn't week's do a Valentine's Day one, but I did do a, a sign for my neighbor that's having a child. Here, I'll show it to you. Um, it was kind of a layered deal. All right. Lois yeah, has one. That's nice. So that's just nice, too. Then I got some, this is blue maho and then some yellow acrylic, see, you know, clear acrylic for the trumpet. Nice. Yeah. That's cool. Dad over there is in a band that plays trump. So. <laughs> uh, that, now, that's nice with the bottle in there. That's a neat thing. Oh, there you go. Yeah, that's cool. <laughs> I was I playing with... Oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. The alcohol ornaments were very popular um, this Christmas and last Christmas. I actually made these Valentine's things last year, um, yeah. but it was still appropriate for today. Yes, yeah. neat. You can sell those at the airport on the way in. Be like, here, you know, grab you some bottles <laughs> on the way out, and you got instant Valentine gifts. Well, there you know, you we're in Kentucky, and everybody loves their uh, bourbon here, bourbon. so it makes gift giving easy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That's Looks cool like Sam's box. got something. He's yeah. Some some living hinges and finger joints and all kinds of stuff on that one. Yeah. Yeah, I found a really uh, no <clears throat> no cost design place, and this was one of their um, straight off the bat, just throw it together. And then uh, I also did one of these boxes too. And there, hey Jim, you got a message? Um, <laughs> their box is supposed to have. Their box was supposed to have just a, a closed top. Mm -hmm. You can see the, the notches, whatever. It was supposed to be closed. So what I did is I cut out the middle mm -hmm. and put the middle on this top and cut out the top. And now I have a lid and it fits perfectly and it won't come off. I mean, if you rattle it around like an idiot, it'll pop off, but it, sure. it'll just sit there. I mean, what's the sense of having a closed box? So. I'm going to do the same thing with the heart. I'm going to go inside the outline of the heart and then cover it as well because, I mean, it doesn't really do any good to sit there closed. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right. Yeah, I decided to start making earrings. Mm -hmm. And I mean, good total Travis, I was making this one for my wife. <laughs> <laughs> so is that for your warning signal? <laughs> yep. I think I think a lot of men would buy them for the women. You have to Day. you have to paint fill the letters, Jim. Yeah. Well, I just made I just made it there literally just go. a little bit ago. There we go. But All I right. had to find it. If you notice, if you say I bought like, like a, a I got like a bloody font. That's terrible. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't finished them yet. I just literally ran that and I sent it to Travis. He's like, dude, yeah. you're gonna sleep on the couch. Yeah, I like the acrylic ones too. Yeah, Lois, those are great. Yeah. That's what I need is I need some red acrylic to make that yeah. one right. Yeah, yeah. That's I was going to get, I was getting a hole in a bigger one as well. <laughs> so, all right. Well, um, if anybody has any questions, be sure and pop them out there. It looks like there's a few people in here today, so we ought to have some good conversations about stuff. Uh, I don't have anything new. I've been stuck in last week. Um, still putting up parts and that kind of thing. So I don't have a whole lot of new stuff on our end yet. So there's the other half of trouble. There we go. Yeah. See, I, I, I let him, I, I let him have the class for one period and he's, he's assigning homework on you. So. I tried. No one wanted to do it. <laughs> hey, you yeah, missed, you he wasn't here. There's actually yeah, you had some takers. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, did people actually did it? Yeah. yeah if you'd show oh, up on time. <laughs> I'm trying to push people to get them to start doing stuff because I keep hearing about everyone. Huh, how do you make money with these lasers? I'm like, you just make stuff. <laughs> Actually, I do have a couple things. I just don't feel like getting up and going or getting them. <laughs> hey, hey Brian. Lois. Oh, go ahead. Go ahead. Hey, Brian. Yeah, Tron. Um, hey, bud. How you like that 32? I like it a lot so far. I had the 22, but it was a prototype. And this one, of course, being 60 watt is more along the lines of what we're looking for. Um, it's got a, a honeycomb bed in it, but it's quote unquote permanently affixed. It's not removable yeah. like they are in the Novas. Uh, not a huge deal, I guess, unless you go, need to clean it or something, but there's no blade system. It's just the honeycomb. Uh, it mm. does have a pressure monitor built in one of the SMC 
uh, air pressure monitors built in standard. Uh, and I think that comes on all of them. I'm not positive. It did on mine and this is for supposed to be a production model. Yeah, for your air pressure. Oh, no. Okay. So, mm -hmm. It's a oh, very okay. useful upgrade. I've had the 22 since last year and I just ordered a 32. Mm -hmm. um, so uh, I just ordered that uh, last month. Gotcha. So I was quoted June, I think. Okay. Yeah. So it's got the pressure monitor, um, the head, you may have the new head on your 22. I had an old one that had a conical nozzle on it that you could unscrew. Um, oh, I have the newer one. Okay. So the 32 will come with that, that head. So you'll be familiar with it and probably be able to use your okay. lenses interchangeably and stuff too on that. Yeah. I checked um, with, uh, Grant. He said they're interchangeable. Yeah. Yeah, so yeah, you, you're looking at a bigger size, and and that honeycomb, of course, and the pressure monitor is a really neat thing uh, to have standard. Other than that, it'll look pretty much the same as the other one. But what is the pressure monitor? Is that similar to the Novus or the newer uh, newer 22s? Um, it's it's well, actually, we have some uh, documentation on it, but it's a uh, let me see if I can find it real quick. I'll pull it's up a, some visuals. It's a digital pressure gauge, right? So it gives you a digital readout of the the actual air pressure, right? Yeah. So it's one of those little dudes, and they oh, used okay. to use they used oh, to use yeah. these on the Mars series machines, uh, and then they quit. And what started this is I found one of them in a box when they shipped all the parts to me when I came on with Thunder Laser, and I was like, "That's a right. cool little thing." And so I kind of, I guess, revived it. So we have a little documentation on it. But yeah, they're coming standard in the uh, Nova 32. I mean, in the Odin 32, from what I can tell. I don't think they would have done that just for me. So. Is that an easy and now, to add on to our I'm sorry. Yep. Now do the low pressure and the high pressure. Yep. Yeah, it reads the after they're combined going out to the nozzle, so it will be able to identify oh, okay. low or high. Mm -hmm. Okay. Cool. Is that an easy add-on? To the Novas? Yeah. Very easy. Let me put yeah. the link in there. Exactly. I've got the, the little bits yeah. and pieces. It's not super complete, but I'll put a link to this in the uh, chat so you can look it yeah. over. Thank it's you. easy, oh. and, and the one thing that's real valuable about it is um, is giving you repeatable air pressure settings. So, you know, it's another variable in your engraving, right, is, uh, you know, is air. That's right. uh, more difficult to quantify, right? Um, you know, <laughs> but yeah, you can go take a readout that's, you know, hey, this is what it looks like at two psi. This is what it looks like at five psi, right? And then you can dial right. it in and right. have it repeatable. Mm -hmm. But yeah, cool. it's it's pretty much laid out here. I've got mine run a little bit differently. Um, I've got my high stage going to the nozzle and the low stage going to one of those air assist enhancers. But I still, I was going to add two pressure monitors, one for high and one for low. Um, but really you're only using one at a time anyway, so you only need to quantify one at a time. So I didn't think it was necessary to have a redundant one on there. Do you have it on your high, high or your low, Brian? Well, uh, it's on the output now, you know, after they're, uh, oh no, it's not. It, it's on the low, on the high. I just look at my big knot, you know, I, yeah. Of course, I usually keep mine around 26, 27 psi max instead of yeah, the. Yeah, your high, your highs for cutting, right? So you're you're only gonna vary your low, right? Or right. Yeah. Vary your I think that is. Yeah, you're right. Because I got two lines running. I got separate lines running now. And they don't actually why. So yeah, it's on the low side now. So. Let me kill the screen so you can cool. see. I'm looking forward to that. So, and at so, some point, uh, if I get a minute, your, go ahead. Earlier, I think you were saying you were quoted March. I think when I talked to you. Yeah, it did. It was came about two weeks early. Um, right. Two weeks, two and a half weeks early. My situation was a little different because they were storing parts in mine too. So you know, they go, "Oh yeah, you need this." So they would open the crate back up and stuff more parts in there. So it didn't just come off the line and go on a ship. They put it to the side and started loading it with stuff. <laughs> so. All right. Well, cool. But yeah, it, it, you'll, I'm really, I'm impressed by the whole system. You know, there's quite a few upgrades from the prototype that I saw, but most everything that you see will be identical with the exception of the larger size and the bed difference, possibly. I don't know what your bed configuration is. As far as, I don't have a knife um, bed. I have a removable honeycomb. A removable honeycomb. Okay. So it didn't have the knives either. Okay. 
Yeah, see, the yeah. prototype I had had a flat aluminum table and then just a honeycomb sitting on top of it. Oh, okay. Yeah, this has a, uh, it's like a magnetic hold back on it. Mm -hmm. It's not the, uh, the pins, it's magnetic hold down, but gotcha. the whole honeycomb will come out. Gotcha. So, okay. Uh, and I'll be selling the uh, selling the twenty two, so hopefully yeah. I get get wired for that. Absolutely. All right. Yeah, cool. But all right. Um, if anybody else has anything, like I said, just let me know. Wake up, Jason. <laughs> <laughs> hey, um, Lois. Oh. Wow. I, I did a bit of testing with your. Um, cut from current position yeah so i saw all kinds of very weird things but i've got it working <laughs> exactly i got it working exactly as you would expect now okay. what'd you do well so i i did a lot of things i don't know exactly which one um <laughs> which one fixed it right i, I know when I, when I fixed it right I, I was messaging travis after the fact um because uh, you know, just to see if uh, he was seeing some of the the same things. But um, so I I started with getting on a was it one one point oh point six or whatever the latest yeah. official release is. So I was on, on the same version. Um, yep. uh, I went in, you know, tried absolute coordinates, tried user origin, um, all that worked as expected. I went in and set a design and. Um, tried to run it from current position. It framed exactly as you would expect. And then when I pressed shift and send, it moved over about, I don't know, a foot and left and just you know, to an arbitrary space and then started engraving. So stop that. I, I, yep. I, I sent the file directly to the laser, tried to run it from the controller, the exact same behavior. Um, and, yeah. and, but it was very consistently wrong, right? So, uh, like, like it had a a stored uh, a position in there. So I went into the move command and um, in a console and moved it around and checked the position. I clicked get position in there to see if it was, you know, actually not reading the position or something. Um, no, no um, different there. Uh, it, it still was performing exactly the same. So I looked in my saved positions in my move console where I had like a saved position for um, like setting yeah. a, a fixed start position from some jigs. And uh -huh. I noticed it was very close to one of those. So I just deleted that one. No, it was very close, but that wasn't it either. So I did something very odd. Um, I read the instructions from Lightburn's website <laughs> on the command. <laughs> Well, and, 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 I, and I noticed something in there um, specifically on that command is it says start from. Well, I always send, right, and send and start are different buttons. In, in my version of Lightburn, I, I go into the settings and turn the start button off. That way I'm always forced to send it or shift send it so I don't have the uh, air sequencing issues. Oh, so I re-enabled re the start button, right? In uh, in Lightburn, right? So which you have to actually uh, reboot Lightburn. I click Start from. It worked fine. Starting from exactly as you expected. Shift Send worked fine. Everything. I disabled the Start button again, and everything works fine. Hmm. So I, I don't know if it's linked to the Start command or not, but yeah, uh, and I've done it, and I've run. I've never disabled that button. Ever. Yeah, and, and like I said, I I don't know why it did that, but I, I've got it working. It works consistently. I've, I've got you know, I've done seven or eight cutting boards as closing gifts for a realtor, where I put the board in, I've manually lined it up, and I run it from current position, and and it works flawlessly. So now the trick is to figure out exactly what will trigger this correction. <laughs> yeah. And that's the next thing. So I figured uh, we'll get a couple, maybe a couple of other people to try it to see if they're seeing anything similar. And then we'll talk to uh, Oz about it and see if there's something somewhere in the code that's crossed up or, you know, because obviously it's not working consistently as you would expect. So yeah. if we it, give them very specific feedback, they'll figure it out and, and fix yeah. it or at least give an explanation on why or how, you know, it's it's working differently. If we get a couple of testers, I wonder if it would be worth uh, actually just starting a thread either in one of the if they're all betas in one of the beta 
light burn things, if not on a standard one, and make it where we can collaborate there so Oz and the team can see it in real time. That may be. Yeah, yeah, yeah and if we got a couple of people that could do it, uh, uh, you know, obviously myself, if you it. could do it. Yeah, I've Travis got two controllers. I've got one of the old controllers and one of the new controllers. You know, the newer ones have the separate Z axis. And um, the the older controller, you had to go into the menu first. But yeah, we can definitely set something like that up. We'll get a couple people and start playing with that and see if we can find a solution. Whoa. Um, that was me. That was my ringtone. So. Right, we got a question from Sam on Kerf. Yeah. So, well, more specifically, my question is, there's a guy that's hawking that little Kerf uh, Jig. gadget thing on Etsy yeah. for like yep. nine bucks. I mean, is it's that free. something that anybody would recommend? Or once I get the Kerf setting dialed in one time, is it is it set forever? I'm probably assuming yeah. not really. Talking about. Yeah, give me a sec. Oh, oh, there it is right there. Yeah, there's the test generator right there. That's a free tool. Don't pay for it. Yeah, those are I'll put it good. in the chat. Or, yeah. So, so, so the curse, oh, go ahead, Jeremy. Well, the other thing is too, and I, I cut lots of uh, things that fit together, right? Um, what you'll find is almost every project, depending on your need, right? There's not a one size fits all jig, right? I, I cut, I cut, you know, stand up table decor where you get a vertical piece of Baltic birch or acrylic, and then it fits into a horizontal piece. So the curve is based off of the thickness of the material in, you know, plus plus the cutout and the kerf. And what I find is, you know, material is never consistent thickness from one piece to the next from the same supplier, whether it's wood, whether it's a quick, you know. So what I find is almost every time I do a job where kerf matters is I do a test cut on that. Right. And uh, and I always start, you know, if, if it's a cutout. So let's say I'm going to go cut a hole that something needs to fit into. If I, you know, if I've got a three millimeter, I will cut it smaller because you can always step it out and cut it bigger. You can never put material back in. Right. So I'm always start and, and walk my way up to that fit. And I do it on a project by project basis. I, I've, I've got that Etsy file. I've done the curve tester. I, I've done about 20 different things. But what I found is there's not a magic tool that makes it repeatable for every time. Right. Your focus could be different. You could have a piece of uh, material that's slightly warped. You could be a different part of your bed. And if you're talking about a, a tight fit where you're, you're actually worried about the thickness of your curve, there's too many variables to get it repeatable. So you know, I'd, I'd test it each time you do it. Yeah, because yeah, all of that matters, especially focus. Yeah, the focus is a big one for me. You know, because that that can change a lot of stuff real quick. So, yep. um, yeah. So Tommy asked uh, or Lois asked about um, where we can watch these. Typically, I upload them all to YouTube, and there's a playlist for all of the webinars. And if you look on our support portal, I'll put a link to it. Um, there's a place that talks about that and where the uh, uh, where to find that. Then uh, there's a link straight to it. But I'm a little behind because I'm still kicked out of YouTube. Uh, I can't upload any videos or anything, and I'm still working on that. Uh, yeah, I think I'm she was asking all. specifically the chat, though, Brian, so where you post links and, and references in the chat, and I think that you have to go in and manually upload, right? Yeah, the yeah. chat or do something safe. manually from GoToMeeting, yeah. Yeah, so when you go to the uh, webinar links, um, let me pull this up real quick so you can see. Uh, oops. When you go to the webinar links, there'll be in each one of those, there'll be a link to the uh, whatever information we have on it. You know, like, let me see if I can find it in the description. Um, some of these may not have it. I may have to go back a little bit older. Um, but they've got a link. Let me, I know it's here. Whoa. I've had that problem here? before, too, where I can't uh, find the most current um, of these meetings that are recorded. The, the most recent one I think I can look up is December 2nd or December 12th or something like that of 2021. That's because Brian's yeah. slacking, though. <laughs> yeah, see, uh, let me find one that has the full information. The The past couple of months. I'm not trying months, to call anybody out. Yeah, well, yeah. and and well, Brian's been banned from YouTube, that so that's part of the problem. 
Yeah, I, it's not showing. I don't know why, but there's a link. I always post a link uh, to the Go To Meeting, and you can look at the tr the chats. I don't know if it shows the chat, but it shows the full transcript um, and all of that stuff. And there's a link in the videos to that. I don't know why none of them are showing up here. Um, but I do need some. I do have to play catch up. This is not something that's typically on the front burner for me. They're helpful and all, uh, but to be real honest, it's not the thing that I'm most concerned about because uh, <laughs> I got to answer service tickets before I upload videos and do all that mess. So um, as we grow, maybe we can have a full-time social coordinator or something like that that handles that kind of thing. Um, but I do have to play catch up. It's all on me right now. So. Hey, Brian. Yeah. Hey, I got to I gotta run. Let's see if anybody had any rotary questions before I go. Gotcha. Rotary questions? I guess uh, not, man. You, I guess you're you free to a, go. You get you, you get a roto boss working with Aurora yet? Uh. <laughs> to be continued. <laughs> there you go. No, no, we're working on it. <clears throat> but yeah, that'll be out once they can post on Facebook again. <laughs> How are you? Oh. Are you locked? Oh, you're in jail. Yeah, I'm in jail right now. Oh, this is gonna be ridiculous. Anyway, I, I was innocent, I swear. Anyway, <laughs> Facebook guys. Well, that's what I yeah, yeah, what what yeah, happened? It, it, it? it was two uh, two. Uh, could you get the three strike rule right? Two of them were from like a year ago, and one of them was yesterday. They didn't like it, so. But anyways. Uh -huh. <laughs> All right. Yeah, I think we're good, man. All right, cool. We'll see you next week. Everybody have a okay. good one. Have a good one. Later. Later. I think. I think when your when your government starts giving out free crack pipes, they gotta they gotta change the Facebook <laughs> standards when they ban people. I mean, come on. <laughs> oh, that's awesome. Oh my god, I was waiting for that to come up. Uh, let's see. So, yeah, anybody got anything? <laughs> I was waiting for that one to come up. I figured it hit the after show. <laughs> oh, wait, what was that? Oh, I'll tell you later, Bravis. Oh. You know, honestly, you're up there in Alaska. You're, you're, you guys are behind. <laughs> We're always behind on everything. It's, it's like a, a time warp. Yeah, so I'm assuming most people in here have watched uh, the ever so controversial <laughs> video that has blown up my newsfeed and messenger for the last two days straight or whatever it's been. <laughs> Yeah, so I was going to ask you something about that. You're mirroring, um, so I, I guess you had wires crossed, huh? On the mirroring. Yeah, with the yeah and I, I posted a little update in the comment or uh, okay. in the description of the video. Because um, what had happened is um, when I originally got the Roto Boss, um, it was sent with a seven pin. I needed a five pin. Um, so I had to go out and find my own five pin and desolder the seven pin off of there, solder up the five pin. And apparently, when Jason and I were going over it well on the phone, I got two wires crossed so we got that sorted so i don't have to mirror it anymore well there you go now you'll forget and mirror it exactly yeah <laughs> i wondered why you said mirroring it because i'm like it don't make sense because i've never had yeah. well, so I, was, I was thinking maybe you physically stuck the rotary in Backwards. you know the opposite direction or something <laughs> with yeah. uh nope. yeah, wiring into it too <laughs> now yeah, with your so do it every time now, now with I'm your stress you didn't put the uh, washer hack on there. The washer hack. He doesn't yeah. know about it. <laughs> hang on, uh, hang on, Travis. I got an article. I'll post um, it in the chat. Uh, why did yeah, it not surprise me that you have an article? <laughs> Heck, he even has articles on defeating the, the safety switches and stuff. That you yeah, don't do. that was my alter ego. Uh, That's what I was trying to tell you about the other day, Travis, when I said that there was a hack or there was a modification for it. To make the uh, thing slide, the uh, rear arm slide without having to use yeah. the. I think Jason's turn. putting a washer on them now because, you know, it's a three cent washer. I think he's doing that on all of them now. Yeah, but see, he really kind of irritated me. Um, he was kind of jumping down me for a couple things. Um, I, I absolutely hate his user manual with a passion. Um, the pictures are junk in it. It doesn't, it reads like a technical document, not like a an actual instruction well, all of manual. my stuff reads like technical documents so but we're used to it from you <laughs> <laughs> but uh 
Yeah, um, and he was like, he wanted to completely stand behind everything on his user manual. He didn't want to take any constructive criticism on it at all. Um, and then got got after me for, hey, you just have to push the tower and it'll slide back and forth. I'm like, mine doesn't. It's like, well, I've rebuilt mine to do the upgrade kit. Maybe I did something wrong. So I reached out to Jim and a couple other people I know that have them. I'm like, hey, do this for me. And not a single one would move. <laughs> I'm like, yeah. ha, see? <laughs> So one question I do have, like with Citrus, the five pin, is your motor facing your laser? Is your motor to the left or to the right? Uh, the motor is on the left on mine. Okay. For the five so pin. It's, okay. It's the same as it's same as the seven pin then. Yeah. That's the reason the why motor is like, the same. Yeah. Well, I didn't the, know the, since his was the prototype of his was just done differently. Is the reason why I was asking. Yeah, I think the rotary is the same. The, on the the difference between the seven pin and the five pin is on the five pin connector, uh, you have to turn a switch on and off, uh, and that yeah. well, that was problematic. So they switched to a seven pin so they can just make a jumper internally so that you don't leave it on by accident and that kind of thing. And that firmware also used the Y axis. It didn't use the U channel like we use now. So there's some differences there with the five pin, but the rotary itself is the same. The motor and driver and all that stuff. Okay, so it's still got the three phase motor instead of the single yeah. phase. Yeah. That's that's my problem on fiber at the moment. So not having the driver for it. Hey Sam. Sam. He's showing he's showing me what he was doing. Yeah, go ahead. Apparently I missed it earlier. Yeah. Just one more <laughs> advice. Don't post that Jeep stuff publicly. I used to belong to a Jeep club and we was we was heavy dealing with Jeep and they will come after you in every way, shape, or form. They're really nasty about the seven slot and using their logo. As, as bad as Disney and the NFL? Yes. <laughs> Jeep is bad about it. Because I had to be even careful. I mean, we had one of the, like the second largest Jeep event in the nation. And Jeep, you know, the representatives and stuff was there. So I got to talk to him extensively. And I was making a few things. And he told me, don't do it. Even at the Jeep event, he said, don't do it. Yep. He said, I'm not going to say nothing. But down the line, somebody could. Oh. He says, it, they'll just they'll shut your ass down and you'll be spending money. Yeah, you the, can, the worst you can company make anything is, you want for personal use, though, right? I mean, if you're not selling it, it doesn't matter. It's illegal, or if you're posting it, it's just like when they say, "Was it in the NFL?" No, no. What the hell Un, is it saying? I think unauthorized, unauthorized reproduction. reproduction. Yes, and it's the exact same thing. And if you post that, like publicly, especially, it's just the way social media is becoming. And it's just, yep. I, I hate to see Sam get in trouble just because of something innocent that he was proud of that he made and post and get smacked on the back of the head for it no i won't yeah. be doing that i own a jeep and my jeep is green so i made a green and black inlay out of acrylic and i was just farting around with it which also brings me to the kerfing question from earlier because it uh i cut out the black one and then next to it reversed it and cut out just the word jeep to put the black letters in the green and then did the opposite with the green and the black the green letters in the black one and it worked out good however i think that my kerfing was too much small i don't know which way it goes because um on the bottom of the p it broke out on both of them so the there wasn't well, enough room in there and it wasn't strong enough the acrylic so just playing around yeah remember too with acrylic it's gonna try to try to re-solidify at the bottom of that cut um you know, so if you don't have enough air to blow it out of the way, uh, you'll get kind of a, a U shape at the bottom uh, if you put it under a microscope. Um, but if you go slow, then you can get a nice smooth edge if you don't use a lot of air. But yeah, you, it's a give and take, right? Yeah, I, I, the settings that I used were straight off the thunder with the 100 watt laser and it, uh -huh. it cut out beautifully. There's no on the inside of the the letters or the outside edge or going all the way around there's no disforming of the acrylic i mean it looks beautiful and so it, it was really yeah. nice i just think that the offset wasn't enough mm -hmm. yeah. the, the letters were too big for the hole by a gazillionth <laughs> of a millimeter yeah. so yeah so yeah just back down that uh, offset a little bit or if it's at zero go negative a little what Jeep do you have, Sam? I know it's way off topic, just I'm curious. Who, what, say again? What Jeep, what kind of Jeep? What oh, uh, just a 2000 Wrangler. 
Oops, you got a TJ? I don't, James? Yes, CJ. I don't know. It's a 2000 <laughs> Jeep Wrangler. And a TJ. Yeah. It's a lot of fun. Haven't got it stuck yet. Having a good time with it. Well, you haven't had enough fun then. <laughs> yeah, that's what everybody keeps telling me, and they keep trying to bring me out. I got a friend of mine that has a, I don't know, I think he's got a 2018 or something like that, Rubicon and all this stuff. And we went up into some sand, and he was like, oh, yeah, I got mine in four-wheel drive and everything else. And I was like, well, as long as the idiot in front of me doesn't stop, I'm just fine in two-wheel drive. Sure enough, I was talking to him on the radio, and that idiot was my friend, and so he stopped. And just rolled forward a little bit, rolled backward a little bit, and just rolled forward again and kept going in two-wheel drive and got out of it. It was no big deal. Just having a really good time with it. It's a lot of fun. Oh, yeah, they're fun. Hey, for y'all of those with multiple brands of lasers, what's the secret to preventing light burn from inverting every image, flipping back and forth? Nothing. If if your if your origin is set to upper left and that's specified by the device and each device can be different. Thunders are all upper left. Uh, there's nothing you can do besides manually mirror it or or keep save some as you know. You know you'll have to. Yeah, we're, we're screwed no matter what we do. Got it. No worries. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, so, save your file as whatever your file is, boss. Whatever your file is, thunder. <laughs> It's it's the yeah, same no. if you if you take a device from fiber to um, to CO2 um, because uh, of how it's set up. So yeah, it's, it's yeah. a pain. Unfortunately, I, and there may be some discussion. I don't remember about linking that having those bind. Uh, he's talking about a lot of stuff about having the libraries and the cameras and all of that stuff all device specific. So maybe there's a way that something like that could be figured out if you could say, I know that device number two is lower right and device number one is upper left and I want to make that change. There may be a way in the software to do that. I don't know if it's planned or anything, but I don't you know, know that it I, do that. I almost think he's already got that implemented because I'm on the beta right now and I've noticed that switching back and forth between my boss and my thunder, I don't have that issue anymore. Really? I just downloaded yeah. the latest one. Let me see. Because I got yeah. I, What's the thing? I got it. Yeah. He's got I'm gonna try it. Version. Yeah, because I'm on uh, February 2nd version. Oh, and there was a February 7th one. Wasn't that there? Was the one yeah. I'm on? I think. I think he just he released one not too long ago. It's the top secret group here. It's talking. About. <laughs> but the only thing that's nice about it is we get to hear from them what will be coming out, and they're okay. fixing a lot of the areas that we won't have to deal with. Yeah. Well, we get <laughs> which i'm actually really really glad one of the features that um i've always struggled with trying to explain to people and i've got it built in a spreadsheet is um, projection mapping for tumblers and i've always tried to simplify it and all that um, he's actually building that into lightbird now so if you are putting a round logo on a tumbler um, there will be an option to go in there Put in your size of the logo, put in the size of the tumbler, and it'll automatically distort your logo how it needs to be so it looks correct on the tumbler. So, because you're putting a two inch, for instance, object on a curved surface, so it actually correct. ends up being less. Well, so it, it'll well, compensate it for that. Yep, yeah, so I got them I got them all the formulas and math equations to uh, calculate all of that. Um, and so yeah, he's actually gonna be implementing that. Um, it sounds like in the the next release of it. So, That'll be cool. excited about that. Yeah. Travis, um, I'm just looking. So I'm on the February 7th version. Um, at least going from my fiber to my thunder and back and forth, it's still inverted. I still got to flip it. Really? Yeah. Huh. And so I was just doing that the other day when um, for the Mad Moose ones um, for that video, because I use both my thunders and my boss. And I don't remember having to invert it, um, but I'll I'll take a second look at it. Of course, I guess you could always mount your sensors in the upper left in your boss, uh, or I could just put a stick of dynamite in my boss and just be done with it. <laughs> I don't know. About that. It sounds like you you, you probably it. just you should sell it. Uh, probably so, be uh, you know, honestly, the boss is really good at engraving tumblers. Um, you know, it's not overly quick, which I like because. Um, and so one thing I, I, you know, I just helped another guy who is trying to en uh, engrave on shot glasses. 
and he's Don't running it at 350 and he kept hitting the tower of his rotary i'm like okay you got to slow it down to 275. he's like first off you're doing small images on something round you if you drop it to 275 you'll actually engrave faster than if you were at 350. He's like, yeah, what? I'm like, well, you've got all the start and stop yeah, yeah. and, you know, <laughs> time and all that. And yep. he did it, you know, he, he took my, he's like, yeah, they engraved great and it doesn't hit the tower. It works great. I'm like, told you. <laughs> nice. <laughs> yeah, I still need my boss for the finer detail engraving on some of the stuff that I do. Like we're doing some uh, anodized aluminum cards um, mm -hmm. that are for Magic the Gathering. Um, and I don't think that the 130 watt would do a good job on those. Well, 130 um, watt, yeah, your spot size is bigger. In the, in the, not, not significantly. Yeah. Between the 80 and the 100, they're, they're almost the same. And the 130, it's only like 0.2 millimeters. And and as long yeah, as you get your car. focus right, you know, you're still going to focus it down. You could go with an inch and a half lens on there and probably do just great. But Yeah, there you go. Yep. Yep. Yeah, that's what I would do because I run, you know, I, I've done those before on my uh, Thunder 130 and I run an inch and a half lens and they come out gorgeous. Um, if you do a lot of those, though, um, I would actually highly recommend spending fiber. five grand getting a fiber because it it does. When I do up my metal business cards, it's 15, 20 seconds per business card. Yep. Yeah. I mean, it's just, it's lightning fast. Yeah. Yep. Have Have you tried yeah. your cards on the that's Thunder? Nice, that's, for, that's cool. No. <laughs> you should at least try one. You may be surprised. <clears throat> yeah, you, you might know, be. The we have what we Ooh. have in stock right now for the cards. Um, gotcha. Are, stock it's from everything yeah. on back order, so we're waiting. Basically. I got you. Yeah, if you if you already have a it's workflow free. in a system, it's probably best to stick with that. If you don't have any spares in uh -huh. case you burn one up, but. Yeah, I can't believe you're finding stuff on back order. That's good. No. I tell you what, though. I just got a load more uh, rich hats that were on back order that I canceled that just got delivered, too. So, horrible. Yeah, when all these truckers shut down, we're all going to be on back order. Yep. <laughs> yeah. So, but yeah, so this one on my fiber takes about 20 seconds. So, and I can't get it to focus because it's reflective, but. Yeah. Um, see your camera. But, yeah, you can see my camera in it, but yeah, and then uh, so it's yeah about twenty seconds per side, um, and it's hard to tell, but these cool. are actually all really, these are all really fine lines in here that it's doing. Uh -huh. I I yeah, it. you can okay. kind of start to see it there. You get that gradient. Yeah, that's yeah. cool. I gotta yeah. say, I can't do a photo on a CO two and a piece of wood, but on that fiber and light burn, man, I can make feet look good. Oh, that's just because of the new <laughs> stuff he has um, in there. Which one of the really, really cool things about um, the new version of Lightburn, um, and hopefully I don't get kicked in the ass for saying this, because I don't know if he wants it out, but I'm just like super stoked about it. Um, have you guys played around with the new photo process that he has? No. So you talking oh about his new grayscale one he was just talking about? Yeah. Where Where is it well, at? Uh, it should be in the um, uh, February 7th update. I understand, but where is the actual process or the setting? Or so you know I where it is, you know where you normally where you do like Stucky or Jarvis or whatever. Yeah. Um, yep. it, it's one of those options in there on that drop down. Yeah, so let me do it. I've got it open yeah. right here. I've played with the I'll, nesting a little bit. That's kind of neat. Yep. It'll be better when it's on the board. I haven't played with the nesting yet. Um, but yeah, I saw what Jason, um, or sorry, uh, yeah, Jason did yeah, Jason. with. Uh, those photos and holy and the contrast crap. yeah the mid so are, are the, so much better so is yeah. it just a new new image mode then yeah it's just a new image mode that he put in there um right. is this only for you beta guys or is this open for everybody it'll it'll uh, be eventually for everyone that'll yeah, be on the regular it'll be version. for everyone yeah. yeah one of the meetings that jason i think it's jason was in i forget who he was talking with one of the laser was a laser god or whoever it was laser was it Gil? Yeah, he said there was going to be a huge amount of updates and a lot of surprises coming in 2022. Yep. Yeah. So we're just actually hearing trickles of what these guys are saying. So there's going to be more stuff coming. Yeah. So, so yeah, there's a lot of stuff in here. So it, it's a beta that's specifically focused around 
galvos, right? So fiber, CO2, and it even works for UVs. But he's putting all sorts of other features. They're built into light burn. Now there's a test generator. So that link that Brian put in there, that O2 thing for the test generation, that, that's a tool built into light burn now. Yeah. And yeah, and, which is awesome for fiber because you, you can vary the speed, the power, the frequency, and the uh, line interval. And then you can actually vary the number of passes as well, too. Um, but uh, so what is the mode called? And is it. Uh, it's going to, he's calling it dot shaping. So I don't see it in there. Um, I got 3D slides. That's cool. Yeah. I'm, I'm yeah, running maybe, version 1.0.06. The one that's coming out either today or tomorrow. Okay. Yeah. Um, so I didn't. I looked when when he posted the photos in the, in the Facebook yeah. group, and I saw that. Now, um, one thing that he snuck in there in a couple of the versions ago and didn't actually post, right? Um, if you go into your adjust image, right, mm -hmm. and you can go in and play with like your contrast and stuff, there's presets in there. Yes, so you can I go did in there and that. say That's like really the nice. preset black paint on white, and it gives you effectively like the um, what was the image R website or something. It gives you the presets for your materials and stuff, and um, and and they actually work quite quite nice. Yeah, the other thing I need to look at is, uh, which it won't matter in a little bit because we're sourcing our own cameras, but uh, I've noticed that this, all of the camera lens profiles should be in Lightburn now, but if we pull up a uh, Win 4K camera, it still only shows the 95 and 100, but it's hard for me to tell because I only have two uh, or three units over here to test with, so that's something else I need to look at because I think we're still having to pre, uh, slip shot the uh, – or the uh, – camera profiles in there for the 120 and the 85 field of view lenses uh, manually, even though it's supposed to be in there. And I know they're okay. populated in the list. If you put a, a non, a non recognized, or if the camera has an identifier that isn't marked, uh, it'll show every camera that, that Lightburn has in the list and it's in there, but it just doesn't show when we plug our thunder cameras in. Yeah, and there's um, and I can take a look at that too for you because I just got in um, my uh, the new cameras um, for my 35 and my uh, um, 60. Yeah, I'd like to see what'll show up in the lens presets after it identifies the camera and see which ones show up. Okay, so. do you want me to do that? Um, kind of run it in the beta side, or do I need to load up the original side? Nah, again? Uh, it'd probably be better to use the production version or the latest okay. one that's out now. Okay. But just whenever it's not a huge thing, I think I've got a ticket made on uh, on the Lightburn forum about it. So and I haven't checked that today, so I probably need to go look before I get everybody all hot and bothered. <laughs> yeah, you don't want to do that. Yeah, I'm gonna have to play around in that other stuff too. Um, that other image mode. I know there was so one I, that he did. You find it? Yeah. I, no, I, I just checked. So the latest he's got is still the February 7th one, and it doesn't appear to be in there yet. So I guess he's okay. Uh, he's yeah, so it should be coming it. out in this next one, though. At least yep. that's what he was making it sound like. Yep. Yeah, no, I specifically checked um, to, to play with it. I, I now, talked to people about grayscale and grayscale there, mapping quite often. Cause, yeah. uh, is there's a there real... a chance it's in the fiber version, but not in the other? That should carry over. I think he probably updates both of the betas. Yeah. Um... yeah well, it should, because the way that that works is a uh, key uh, determines which devices. Well, yeah, the, yeah, the the key determines what's active in there. It's all the same software, but like with the photo rendering stuff, it's all the same module that yep. for both the fiber and, and the, the yeah. gantry side. So yeah, when he updates that module, it, it should be fine. Yeah, it should be a global change. Yeah, the preset ones on the photo work on the CO2 and the uh, fiber. Do they? The, yeah. Do they change according to the device? So it knows if it's a CO2, it'll be more like 500 speed and 20 power than... Well, it's it's not presets for your settings. It's preset for your image adjust. So it adjusts the enhance uh, radius, gotcha. the contrast. Gotcha. So it, it's just like graph. Was it gravigraph or not gravigraph? I got gotcha. uh, Photograph. Yeah, uh, photograph and the image or. Yeah, there'll be two people that are very upset because it's going to put them out of business because their whole business was uh, 
building those macros for um, Corel Draw, and those are going to be going bye bye because now they're all built into Lightburn. Well, that and 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 ImageR I think just went from a free version right to now everything's paid. So uh, there. Yeah, I noticed there. that. Which, That's weird. They, they, That's they, they put a lot of. Anyway. <laughs> they put a lot of development in it. They're doing some cool stuff with it from what I've seen, but you've taken away the free version. You're forcing people to pay for it, and we'll say other software that a lot more has got it. You, it's going to be tough for them. It's going to kill them. I guess the only people that are going to use it are people that don't have uh, Lightburn-supported machines. Which There aren't many. There's still a bunch of RD works holdoffs, and, and and honestly, if that's all you ever do, and you're doing, you know, production work, a lot of people still use RD works because they don't design in it; they just use it as a control software yeah. anyway. So they don't really uh, see all the benefit, and, and some for some people it may not be one. But but I'll tell you what, it's so far ahead; it's light years ahead of everything else. Lightburn is. Yeah, honestly, even with Lightburn, without the actual design part of it. I still like it better for production, um, just for the simple fact it's laid out very similar to all the rest of my production software that I have, because um, they all, it's like all these production software guys got together and go, okay, this is the layout we want to use for everything. And yeah. so, it, you know, it works really well. Um, you know, it's just super, yeah. super easy to work in. And and even the connectivity, I always have problems getting RD works to work, you know for some reason i don't i don't know what it is about it but the communication is different you know the whole communications protocol seems different you know when they when they did the 1.0 when all that big com change happened uh mm -hmm. you know there's a little bit of a glitch there at the very beginning I, that was a total rewrite of the communications protocols i think and um they are just so now you can run multiple versions of lightburn you know have different ones open and run multiple lasers on multiple machines on mm -hmm. multiple instances and that's something you just can't do with rd works either is you know it, once it grabs that device it locks it in and that's the one you're going to use unless you disconnect and open up a new instance that way so Ooh. there's a lot more flexibility there yep well, does anyone have any questions for me? I've got to run. I've got to get out and go look at a boat I have to do a color change on. Cool. You just going to dip it or get the spray cans or you going to wrap much, it? Yeah. Thinking, uh, you know, rattle can Krylon should work great. Yeah. yeah it, bro. It'll yeah. save you all that time of wrapping and the heat guns and cutting stuff out and all that. Are you gonna, uh, Can you wrap a boat or would that tear up? Oh, no. We wrap boats all the time. That's actually one of our specialties that we do. Is it? Um, yeah, you just have to know, uh, well, one, you have to know what you're doing and you just have to use the right, <laughs> you have to use the right materials and the right install techniques. Um, but yeah, we don't really use heat guns that much. We have a, a huge infrared, uh, or they're near, near field infrared, uh, heat lamps, um, gotcha. that we set up, um, does most of the work for us. I see. Cool. <laughs> I have a question for you, Travis. Yeah. Okay. What's that? Um, great job on the, uh, on the comparison video for the, uh, the tumblers that was, uh, or, or the uh, rotaries that was, that was very informative. Um, I'm still kind of stuck on the idea of the Chuck rotary. And I think I had mentioned to you last week that the, um, uh, the one from uh, China that I saw had an issue with the, um, with the seven pin plug. Mm -hmm. And I was checking out the, um, link that you had for the hm rotary mm -hmm. one that you didn't have a didn't have on their website they've actually got a wire i guess that goes into their rotary for the seven pin thunder mm -hmm. um curious if that would be something that i could use with the chinese rotary device to get that to work with a thunder um the answer to that is possibly. And okay. the reason I say that is it, as long as the, the Chinese uh, rotary is a three phase uh, stepper and it's got, it has to have the controller on the actual um, device. So, cause some, some lasers, they build the, the stepper controllers into the actual laser, um, which is why sometimes like you'll see like, you know, Thunder or Boss or whatever, they have those up charges for those because right. they're having to add the controller to the actual rotary. So as long as the, you know, it's a three-phase stepper on there, it's got the controller on it, then yeah, you can just grab the seven pin 
uh, cord and uh, plug it into the appropriate slots and you're, you should be good to go. Um, I'd actually honestly uh, look at getting that one from HM that I linked um, because that one is, they come in both a single phase and three phase. Um, and I believe uh, when you order them from him, you have to order through his Facebook Messenger. And I believe if you tell him that it's for a Thunder, he will automatically put uh, the correct pin on there for you. So it's ready to roll. But I don't see that he doesn't offer a Chuck rotary. I thought he did. What? Let me take a look here. Okay. I'm, the thing I'm uh, looking at is I like a found, roller. I had, found a, uh, I had found one that did. Um, let me see here. A professional logo. No, I don't stop it, computer. <laughs> At least it wasn't porn. <laughs> <laughs> oh, sorry, no, it's a uh, Cloud Ray um, is who makes the that one. Right, Cloud Ray makes the Chuck the Chuck rotary, but it only comes with either a three or a four <laughs> pin wire. And yeah, um, message I them and see if they'll throw a seven pin on there for you. I did. I already tried that. And they said, no, you know, they, I think the broken English that I got was basically no, but you can do it yourself. So gotcha. when I saw, when I saw the, um, when I saw the, the wire that, uh, that they're selling at HM, I thought, huh, I wonder if that will work. Cause I'm pretty sure that the, um, the rotary that they sell has the, uh, you know, it's a three phase and it's got the, um, I don't know what you were calling it before. The uh, I think it's got the works attached to the to the rotary. Okay. Oh, the driver. Ryan. The driver. Oh, yeah. Ryan. Nope. No, we no, can't. Brian. Hear you. Not a thing. Nope. It's okay, Brian. Oh, we all understand. <laughs> you need a new computer. <laughs> I'm going to switch my microphone to my whip. Well, now we hear you. Okay. So the, the connector, none of that matters. It's just the connector we use. So you can wire any rotary you want to up to that machine. It, it, it makes no difference whatsoever. The signal that goes to that rotary is 36 volt power for the motor or the driver or whatnot. And then there's the, the step and direction or whatever coming straight from the controller to that connector. Like Travis said, there's no driver, there's no nothing. So you don't have to use a certain motor because it doesn't match up to anything because there's no driver on the machine. As long as your driver and motor combination can be controlled by a Ruida controller, that's all you need. And it can needs to handle uh, 36 volts. That, that, okay. That's all that matters. Uh, you can buy a 7-pin XLR connector off of Amazon for $4.99 wired up yourself or we can sell you one that's already got pigtails on it and you can attach it to whatever rotor you get. So don't get too hung up on this seven pin connector and that driver because it literally doesn't matter. Yeah. That, that might be the way to go. I, I haven't found, I checked, I scoured Amazon. I couldn't find any seven pin connector that yeah. had uh, that configuration. The it was, It's, you know, six on yeah. the outside in the U shape and well, one in the middle. Seven, seven pin XLRs don't exist on Amazon anymore, Brian. Yeah. <laughs> like we, we, yeah, you're going to have to buy them from an electronic supplier or something. Uh, yeah. I, I spent some time looking for really? them. Really? Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Um, uh, honestly, don't get the hung up on the connector, though. I mean, don't yeah. get hung up on that connector. We have a pigtail we'll sell you and we can help you get a rotary connected. So, it, okay. It, the, yeah, the and driver, honestly, go ahead. And say honestly, if you get the pigtail from Brian, um, all the pinouts you don't have to worry about the pinouts on the connector side. Well, uh, yeah, you do. If he's huh? not gonna, if he's not getting a, if he's not getting a lead shot IST thirty seven motor or whatever we use, they won't. Oh, the that's true. Yeah. Yep. So, that is right. But you shouldn't worry about any of that stuff as long as the rotary. You just need to know that it can be used on a Chinese uh, Ruida controller. Okay. I'll check and, and make and, sure. And you need the motor and the driver, not just the motor. See, that's where everybody gets confused. It's not a certain motor because it has to match the electronics in the machine. It's a certain motor just because that's the one we choose to use because we use it for everything else along that product line. You see what okay. I mean? Yep. And we can help you, you know, get whichever one working that, yep. that you decide on. Yeah, cool. and that, that one from CloudRay, um, like I said, you can get it as a three phase. It's got the driver built into it. Yeah, um, right. So the thing you'll need at that point is that pigtail uh, from yeah. Brian, and you'll be good. That's Excellent. right. Excellent. 
Cool. Yeah, if okay. it's got the driver on board, that's what you're looking for. Yep. Yeah. Excellent. I don't know what happened to my speakers. They've been acting up all day, uh, but I don't have time to figure it out right now. So I'll just use this little crappy speaker on my webcam. That, that's okay. I'm just going to send you down a new headset, Brian. Yeah, well, I'm actually going to get another one. Uh, what it is, I've got so many. I've got two HDMI four channel capture cards in this machine and probably about 20 different USB devices, USB microscopes and barcode scanners and just cameras yeah. and all kind of stuff. And it just goes nuts, especially when I turn on um, uh, OBS and try to record something that gets everything all screwed yep. up. Hey, what, what capture cards are you using? I don't know. They're, they're not the expensive ones. I'll guarantee you that. They're not the black magic. I wanted to get those, but those are $900 a piece. Um, yeah. I, I found yeah, them I on Alibaba or something. They're in the $300 range. They get a little okay. warm, but I'm, I'm fixing to put this computer on a 5200 chiller, I think, or one of my C5000s on the 5000 series chiller and see if I can crank it up a little bit. Gotcha. Yeah, no, I because right now I've been using one of the um, Elgato uh, mm -hmm. 4K 60 car, uh, capture cards. Um, now, but I, need I can look up my device so ID. Been... I'll look up my device ID because it works great with OBS and I'm not getting any lag or anything off of it. So it seems to be a good product. Uh, I'll look at it here in a little bit and get you a link to where I got it. I forgot where I got it from, but I think okay. it's like 300 bucks. Okay. Yeah, I've been because the ones I've been looking at are about two grand or so. Because I need one that's got a, a quad inputs for 4K 60. Oh, okay. So yeah, these aren't 4K. These are 10. These are these are 1080. Oh yeah, yeah. The, I need the card that I got. If you need four, yeah, yeah, that's way beyond <laughs> what, what, what I'm gonna get. I'm gonna stick to 1080. I already yeah. have. I've said it before. I've already had a face made for radio. I don't need anybody to see it in high definition. <laughs> yeah. Well, unfortunately with me, no one wants to see my face, but they're stuck seeing it. They want to see, you know, lasers and rotaries and all that kind of fun jazz. So, yeah. Um, well, let's see. I've been messing with that stuff. Does anybody else have any questions? I mean, oh, I know what I was going to ask Arthur. Did you get your panel in your replacement film finally? I did. I got it today. In fact, I was just uh, after we're done here, I was going to going to do the install and hope I don't screw anything up doing it, but it seems yeah. simple enough. Yeah, I've never done it. So you you can write an article for me if you want to. <laughs> <laughs> uh, maybe I'll, I'll write the article how not to do it. But yeah, thanks that, so much, Brian. I really appreciate you yeah, sending that I, my way. I know that was a long time coming, but we couldn't even get them from Ruida. You know, we were waiting on them to make them. They, they would make the controllers with them on it, but they wouldn't send, send us any separately. So we were right. finally able to get a few of them. Cool, I appreciate it. Sure, okay. sure. Hey, quick, All right, well, if there's question, no other questions or... for me, I'm going to run. All right, man. We appreciate you. Thanks for uh, Thanks, Travis. taking over the class last week. <laughs> oh, yeah. It was fun. So, so, <laughs> it was like the after Travis. hours the whole time. We're like, are we going to record this? I'm like, hell no. <laughs> <laughs> hey, so. quick one, Brian. So Sam had some question that uh, I responded to there. So um, to, to your Follow on question, Sam, about the fumes being lethal or bad to breathe, right? So in terms of anything you stick in the laser and cut with the laser, it's not good to breathe the fumes, right? Even if you're cutting wood, anything that's laser safe, you are still cutting it with directed energy source. So think you're cutting it with a, a really hot piece of fire. You're not going to breathe the smoke from burning wood and it be good for you, right? But it is not kill you if you get a whiff of it, right? Um, some things that are not deemed as laser safe, uh, PVC, anything that cl uh, includes chloride and stuff like that, are a lot more toxic. They create chlorine gas or hydrochloric acid that eats up the internals of your laser. They will cause immediate uh, you know, harm to your respiratory system. So when we say laser safe is meaning it's suitable to put in your laser and cut with adequate ventilation right under your normal process but yeah none of it is designed for you to breathe right so you, you still need to ventilate it you don't want to be uh you know cutting it without any ventilation and you don't want to be breathing it in any um extended duration <laughs> correct yeah i knew that i didn't want to breathe the pvc stuff that that was really bad everybody talks about you know I don't I can't remember the gas that it lets off specifically but it was 
World War II or whatever, cyan oh, gas or whatever, yeah. and it kills people real quick. Yeah, I don't want to do that, but just making sure that whatever I do, do, it's, you know, decent enough. And uh, yeah, as long and, as and it's getting what, what outside, can, it won't be bad. What, what you can normally do is if you've got something specifically like that, um, you know, one is you always want to check the vendor you're getting it from. Right. To make sure. So like you had you had a cut sheet from Joanne's or, you know, someone who's a legitimate store. You're not buying it from a guy off of eBay. Right. Um, and then and then the other thing that I always do is a uh, ULS has got some really good stuff, as does uh, Trotec. Right. In terms of big, you know, high end laser suppliers that also sell um, materials to so Trotec. And I pulled that blurb directly from Trotec's site and Trotec's got videos and they cut it and you know offer it as material so um you know that's that's a good way to double check right is you know those people are in we'll say the the high-end expensive laser machining business right so um their their information uh, as good as anyone's I've seen in terms of what is laser safe and what they sell but you want to make sure that it is in fact you know polyethylene or polyurethane or polyester um, you know, and, and the only way I know to do that is buying it from a reputable supplier and making sure it's listed, right? Not buying it from, you know, some guy who said it's this uh, on eBay or you bought it through a Facebook group or something. You want some sort of label and traceability. Right. Yeah, I saw the one the one guy did a I don't know if he was a scientist or whatever, but he did a, a little test about getting a wire, heating it up and then burying that in the material that you want to cut and then take that and put that over an open flame. And if you see a green uh, element of that flame, that that is the really bad stuff the that comes from the PVC type of burning it, that it'll kill you quick. So just it was wondering. copper wire. Yeah. yeah, copper wire, and then you heat it up. Yeah, I, maybe you've seen the same video, but yeah, the guy – talked about how to test for it to be if, to see if it's lethal or not that's a good precursory test i'd still want to uh probably look at the safety data sheets and things like that uh, to be sure but that is a pretty common i've seen actually quite a few people uh demonstrating that and, and i think it's pretty common even in science labs and things like that to do a you know precursory test for stuff like that but yeah that is a good way to check i think um, I'm going to stop the recording.